Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and I'm here with Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hello, JC. This is where we share weekly home improvement tips, and this episode we're going to talk all about toilets. Yay. Cindy. Yes, JC. What do you know about toilets? Are we talking about a flushing toilet? Yeah, well, any kind of toilet. So it could also be called a lavatory, a pot, a loo, or a water closet. <laughs> really? Water closet. You know, I, I hear that term bantied around by, bantied, bandied around by a bunch of the old banter. banter, so bantied around by a lot of the old plumbers. Yeah, it's still used today a lot in Europe. Really? still call it a water closet. In, in so a, it's where the toilet and another plumbing fixture is located. So, so it was probably originally because it was probably a small room, like a little closet, they dumped a, a, a flushing toilet in there? Where, like a bathroom first referred to it as just where the bathtub was located, separate sure. from the, the toilet. Yeah, interesting. I think that a, a lot of the plumbing terminology, you'll see WC. Correct. Uh, it, was, on, uh, it was first uh, coined uh, in 1870. Wow. Really? When was the uh, first toilet, The actually the first flushing toilet? A long, long time ago? 1596. Wow. For uh, Queen Elizabeth I. I liked her. And then the uh, first patent for a flushing, an actual flushing toilet where you had a, a tank, they actually called it a cistern. So they had this tank that held water, and it was above the the bowl itself, and you would pull a chain to release that, and then the the water weight and that height dropping down would flush the uh, the bowl, and that was in 1775. So then in the 1880s, you know the uh, plumber who bought the first patent for the most reliable toilet at the time. Oh crap! I know this. <laughs> You do. <laughs> and, and where did they get that? Where did they get that saying? I'm going to the crapper. Well, it was Thomas Crapper. Right, which was emblazoned on all of his toilets. So World War World War One servicemen who were fighting in Europe. Mm -hmm. They, you know, I mean, he had his name on all of the toilets That's at the good time. Good branding. Yeah, <laughs> excellent branding. And they, you know, they loved it. You know, this is a, a, a reliable flushing indoor toilet. And the serviceman, you know, would, would just constantly exclaim, you know, I'm going to uh, run to the crapper. Do you have any more historic events in toilet history? 1911 was a big one. Yeah? Philip Haas of Dayton, Ohio, okay. developed a flush rim toilet, which depended on multiple jets of water from a ring with a downward pointing perforations and thoroughly washed every portion of the bowl. So, so that's a modern toilet. So you've got the water coming around the small holes around the rim of the bowl. Right. He which was huge, which it, it made it more efficient. Like you say, it cleaned it and it helped give that little vortex so that it would flush easier. So he improved it in nine, between 1924 and 27, but that's basically the modern toilet that we use today. Yeah, interesting. It, you know, it's wild. Is back then, you know how many gallons the average toilet held in the uh, cistern or the tank? No. Seven gallons of water. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing, huh? Yeah. What is it now? 1.5? Well, it's 1.6. So after 1994, it became 1.6. So uh, before 1980, probably the average toilet in a house was about five gallons. You know, some of the real old ones were seven, but the average was five gallons of water in the tank. Wow, it must have been huge. Yeah, well, it didn't matter what you had in that toilet, man. It was going down. And then from 1980 to 1992, they changed it so the average flush was about 3.5 gallons. Hmm. And then the, the huge change uh, in 1994, it had to be 1.6 gallons or, or less. And now some are like, uh, you know, uh, 1.28 gallons. Wow. And that's some of the big changes we'll talk about is they had to completely redesign. And, and some of the first toilets that came out, 1.6 flush, would not flush. If you used a lot of toilet paper or, you know, if there's a lot of waste in the, the bowl, it just wouldn't move it. So you end up flushing a couple times anyway, so it wasn't saving that much water. But now they've changed the flush valve and the size, and now, now they actually do a pretty good job at uh, 1.6 gallons per flush. So do toilets look the same around the world? It's, it's interesting how many different designs there are, and especially overseas, how there's squatting toilets. Some are actually, they have little areas on the bowl itself where you can get on top of it and squat down. And so your feet are like where the um, seat would normally be, 
and then there's toilets where it almost looks like a, a urinal, like in a men's restroom where you'd have a urinal, and it's in, it's buried on the floor, and you squat over that. So so for anybody in the U.S., I mean, it's it's I would need an instruction manual. Well, have you seen the toilets in Germany? I don't think so. No. <laughs> so oh, maybe. It's the reverse bowl design. No, and that's what. Where it's got a little shelf for the fecal matter to go instead of a into shelf. The... Yes. So it doesn't plunge straight into the water. Wow. I so I guess so, so it... you avoid splashing, but the <laughs> nice the odor is increased. Yeah, I would think so. And so our and skid how do you marks... keep that clean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So so does it? I, I wonder when you flush if that's the shelf is right yeah. washed off. Wow, yeah. weird. Yeah. So it, you you get so used to one design, like here in the U.S., we're used to this just standard bowl. Well, you go on and vacation and you go, like, hey, I need to go to the bathroom, and it's like, what the heck is going on? Well, well, like in Europe, it's interesting how many of the urinals for men are are they're completely exposed. So you just walk up to it, and they they'll have like four. It's like one big center structure and and it's completely open and you're facing this and there's you know other people all around this and you just urinate out in in public so interesting what uh you know pe- <laughs> what people accept mm-hmm. so the basic toilet like here in the u.s um maybe we'll go over the the basic design okay so you've got a tank that holds the water and you've got a fill valve where the water fills up for a, a float will stop it at a certain height and then when you flush it, you either have a flap, which has been standard forever, or there's a tower style that lifts up. So you have this cylindrical tube that lifts, and there's a gasket on that, and it allows all the water from the tank to go into these holes around the rim, and then that water goes into the bowl, and the weight and the speed of that water going into the bowl flushes it. And every bowl, like every anywhere that you have drains in your home, whether it's a, a sink or a toilet, you're going to have some type of trap. So in the design of the bowl, there's an S shape. So once the toilet flushes, it traps some water, and that doesn't allow sewer gas to get into the house. All right, why don't we cover some basic toilet repair tips? Okay, I'm ready. All right, you want to talk about handles? Toilet handles. You've got a handle mounted on the very front of a tank. Some are off on an angle and then some are on the side of the tank and you know need to know what style it is before you run to the hardware store well there are universal handles and they fantastic for the front and an angle but we found that the ones for the side if you try to bend that universal angle uh, for the side it just it just doesn't hold its shape so if you have a side mount on your toilet tank I would look at the packaging and find one that's specifically for the side and you're gonna have no problems All right, what about threads? So most toilet manufacturers, on the handle itself, it's going to be a reverse thread, so you need to know that. But there are some that are just a standard thread. So again, look at your packaging, because when you try to tighten that nut, it might actually be a reverse thread. And then the slack on the chain, a lot of people have a question, like when I attach that chain to the flap, or if you're attaching it to a a tower style, how much slack should there be? And you're looking to have just about a half an inch of slack. You want it, you want it almost snug, but just slightly sagging. So they say most manufacturers say just about a half an inch. So for the next tip, if you've got water on the floor by the base of the toilet, most likely it's a bad gasket. So connecting the toilet to the main drain, you've got some type of gasket, and in most cases, it's wax. It's this wax ring that you set the toilet on. And it does two things. One, it makes sure that there's no leaking of the sewer gas, and it also keeps it watertight, a watertight connection to the main drain. And what happens sometimes is if you have a bad clog and you're using a plunger and that clog doesn't move easily, you actually can blow out this wax. And then over time, if your toilet rocks at all, you compress that wax, and then when the toilet rocks back, it doesn't spring back. It just flattens out, and then water can leak. So why is it made of wax? It's you know it's they used to always use plumber's putty and that worked great for years, but it was difficult for the average homeowner to know how much to put under there and to to make this nice round gasket out of out of this plumber's putty. And what's interesting about the plumber's putty is it stays soft. There was there weren't as many problems I don't think with plumber's putty, but they went to an easier solution which is this round gasket made of wax and it compresses as you put the toilet on it. The problem, though, is the average homeowner 
if you're trying to do it by yourself and you compress it or you miss the hole a little bit with the bottom of the toilet, you can crush this and then you've ruined it. So what I like to use is something called Sani Seal and it's a polyurethane gasket. So it's this round gasket with a flange and it's a little wider than a regular wax ring so it'll sit over the toilet bolts. There's generally two bolts that you use to hold down the toilet, keep it in place. And the Sani Seal will go over those two bolts. It'll keep, the, keep them upright so it's much easier if you're working by yourself to reseat the toilet it holds them straight up so you can set the toilet on it and if you were to crush it it springs back into shape so it's just an excellent there's been very few innovations in plumbing and this is one of them when I remodeled homes I bought and sold real estate for like 20 years and the amount of wax rings that I destroyed. And what's funny, we'd always keep a, a couple wax rings in the work car. So in the winter, they would get cold and brittle, and you would crack them, and then the summer they would melt. So this, <laughs> so the Sandy Seal is fantastic. It, it's it's this you know uh, rubberized almost gasket that just it, it, it's it has like a lifetime warranty. Well, we did a couple nice videos on YouTube on our channel. Right. So, in, yeah, in fact, that's a great idea. If you go to the Fix It Home Improvement channel, and uh, I'll put a couple links in the show notes uh, for this episode, we'll give you a link to it so I'll show you how it works, and, and it just does a great job. So the next tip I'd like to share is if you're changing the flap in your toilet or you're changing the gasket on your flush valve... Why don't you explain what it is first? So in your toilet tank, what your handle and your chain is connected to is either going to be a flap that opens up, that flushes the water out of the tank, or it's going to be this tower that has a circular gasket on it. And toilets have always had a universal size. That opening was always two inches. And then right around 1994, when they changed to these 1.6 gallon tanks, they created a flush valve that was three inches. So now you need to look inside the tank. Before, you could always run to the hardware store and grab a universal flap or a gasket. Ah, oh, the good old days. The, really. Now you need to know. And one easy way is to take the lid off the tank, open up that flap, and just measure it. It's either going to be a 2-inch hole or a 3-inch hole, or just remove it and bring it to the hardware store. But now it's no longer as easy to just pick up a universal flap because there is no such thing anymore. There's actually quite a few styles. And then there's a couple different manufacturers like American Standard that have a, a completely unique design. So it, it's not a bad idea to first off measure it and then just, you know, with, with smartphones now, just take a quick picture of it and you'll be able to match it up when you go to the hardware store. So since we're talking about flush valves, if you have a leak between the tank and the bowl, most likely you have a bad gasket that connects the tank to the bowl or you've got bad gaskets that are on the bolts that hold the tank to the bowl. And most toilets are going to have, if you're buying a replacement kit, I would get all three. I'd get the bolts, I'd get that spud, spud gasket, and I would change them all. The only thing you need to look at before you run to the hardware store is if it's two bolts or three bolts holding that tank to the bowl. And then, you know, if you want to uh, remove all that first before you go to the hardware store, then you can see the size. Those are generally p pretty standard. But again, since 1994, you're going to have to see whether it's a 2-inch flush valve or a 3-inch flush valve. I've got a couple tips on fill valves, especially if you're using a fluid master. Why don't you explain what a fill valve is first? Okay, so in the toilet, you've got a valve that's going to turn on and off depending on the water height, and you've got some type of float. The old styles had a ball on the end of a rod, and as that floated up, it would turn off the valve and after you flushed it, it would lower and, and turn on the valve to fill the tank with water. And I really like the Fluid Master. And, and again, on our uh, YouTube site, you can see a couple videos. But this Fluid Master has the float built right onto the body of the valve. And so it, it does a really good job of turning it on and off. But what they have is they have an adjustable adjustable arm inside of it. You can adjust this valve from 9 inches to 14 inches so it fits a wide variety of toilets, which I really like. The one thing that most homeowners don't know is there's a little mark. There's a line on the top of this valve and it's marked CL because it's for the critical level. And you want to have this one inch over the overflow tube. So on your flush valve there's a little tube at the center and this is a safety. If the 
valve were to malfunction and just keep filling your tank rather than flooding your house, it goes into this this tube that's in the built into the flush valve, and it will continually drain the the um, tank, so you won't overflow. So what you want to do is you want to adjust the height of the fill valve so that this line is one inch above the overflow pipe. And that's a, a big question we get. It's nice that this thing is adjustable, but you know what height do I adjust it to? And so you're looking for this line and adjusting it to that. And there's also a lot of the new flush valves, the actual overflow tube itself is adjustable, and you would want to adjust this one inch below the hole for the toilet handle. So those are a couple key tips that uh, make replacing those very easy. Why don't we discuss supply lines? Okay. What is a supply line? So this is the tube that's going from the shutoff valve below the toilet to the toilet tank. Okay, so the problem though is that there are also supply lines for faucets. And depending on how a hardware store is merchandise, some supply lines are all put together, so faucets and toilets, and some have the toilet supply line with the rest of the toilet repair stuff. Right, so it can be aggravating for a homeowner. They, they go in, they... They say, I need a supply line. They're directed to that aisle, and then they grab one, expecting them to all be universal, and they're not. So you need to know the size. So there's two sides on the supply line. One side has a unique size that's going to your shutoff valve, and the other side is either going to be half inch for faucets or seven eighths for toilets. So you need to know, first off, it's for a toilet, so you're going to look at the packaging, you're going to find a supply line for a toilet. Then you need to know what size is going to your shutoff valve. And in most cases, it's 3 8 compression. Now, if you bring the old supply line, it's going to be easy for you know the hardware store to match that up. If you don't know the size, you can also pick up a universal supply line. And for a toilet, it's going to be 7 8 on the one side. And then on the other side, it's going to have a couple of bushings. So it's going to allow you to connect to half-inch IPS, half-inch compression, or 3 8 compression. So you need to know what size supply line, and you need to know the length, too. So, and for length, the, if you don't know how long, let's say, you know, you, you just forgot to bring it to the hardware store, always go long. You know, the average would probably be around 9 inches for a toilet. But if you don't know, go long, and then you just make a soft loop in it. So for another tip, what if we're talking toilet seats? What should we know before we go to the hardware store? Well, what kind do you like? Do you like a cushy one? Cushy. Uh, a wooden one. Right. So you have those decisions to make, but you also need to know if it's round or elongated. Exactly. And the easiest way to figure that out is you can actually measure from the bolts, the holes that are in the bowl, to the end of the bowl. And if it's considered round, or standard, it's going to be about 16 and a half inches from that hole to the front of the bowl. And if it's elongated, you're looking at about 18 and a half inches. Another tip I have for toilet seats is I really like these new plastic slow closed toilet seats. Do you? I do, because if you have kids in the house, if they have some of the old thick heavy toilet seats that are wooden, if they have their hand in the bowl and they close this, they could crush their fingers. That'd and be a terrible way to hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah, what a story to say. You know, how'd you get that scar? Mm -hmm. And then if you have a really old toilet, they start to craze. They're, they're just clay. And we had a couple times in some of the houses that we, we remodeled, these older homes, someone would slam the seat and they would actually crack the bowl. So I would always grab one of these slow closed plastic toilet seats. So I also have a couple tips for toilet plungers. Ooh, are all plungers created equal? They are not. You've got a cup style that's really just designed for tubs and sinks, and then you have a plunger that has a flange on it, and that flange seats itself into the bowl of a toilet, and that gives you that flushing power. So does the cup style plunger, does that work on a toilet? No, they're, they're useless in a the toilet. They'll fold up, and they, you just can't get it to seat and get any force. <laughs> so do people know this? Uh, anyone who talks to me, yes, I, I let them know. Because we sell all those decorative plungers that people have in their bathrooms. Do they know it's not for the toilet? <laughs> no, but they look really cool. They do. They're very pretty. they got yeah. the glass handle. Yeah, if it doesn't have a flange on it, it's not going to seat, and you're not going to get enough force to really unclog a, a, bad, a, a bad clog. So uh, there's also another style 
So you, you're looking for a flanged plunger for a toilet. The other style is an accordion shape, kind of, and it's called Master Plunger. And this is shaped to fit into the bottom of the bowl. And they actually have a couple new styles that'll fit into the new 1.6 gallon flush toilets because some, some of them have a smaller opening on the bottom of the bowl. And there's two ways to plunge. If you have a regular rubber toilet plunger with that flange, the way you want to plunge is you want to put the plunger into the bowl and you want to give gentle downward strokes and then you want to lift it up and see if you broke free. If you didn't, then you want to push down halfway and then pull up quickly and you want to encourage the water to pull backwards and that's going to help dislodge anything. So it's kind of a pushing and then a pulling motion on a standard plunger. Now if you have this accordion style, what you want to do is, because if you just use a standard downward pressure, all that air inside this plunger is going to blow out of the bowl. So what the way you want to use the accordion style plungers is put it into the bowl and slowly press it and you're, you're going to allow all the air out so it's going to bubble out. And then you want to lift it up slightly, keeping it in the water, and you want this plunger to fill with water and then you're going to give just a nice solid pressure a downward stroking motion and this combination of air and water is what's going to blow loose any clog in the bowl but you have to be very careful again we talked about blowing out a wax seal if you have a bad clog if you have paper and waste in the bowl and it's really clogged and it doesn't move right away you can actually blow out the wax the wax seal and that's why i like you know like the sandy seal the polyurethane gaskets it's too bad we didn't have video on this because I really appreciate all the, the, all the live action that All you the gave gesticulating me. I'm yeah. doing right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if you can't get it free, if you can't blow loose a clog, the other item that you can purchase is a toilet auger. And this is a, basically a rod for your toilet, and you would never want to use just a standard rod because you'll scratch up the porcelain. These toilet augers are specifically designed for the bowl, and they'll have... A rubber piece on the bottom of it so that you don't scratch the bowl and you feed this rod into the bowl as you turn it and it blows loose whatever's in there and in fact when we had rental properties you know a lot of times we would go fishing for amazing the stuff we would find in toilets so it does a it does a great job in in unclogging if a plunger doesn't do the job well remember at the hardware store when they were flushing paper towels down the, yeah, the toilet yeah why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. But a, but a toilet auger, that's what we used to, to get rid of that. And as we pulled it up, we saw that it was all this paper towels, you know, heavy paper towels. And, uh, you know, that was that was the clog. And the auger did a great job of, of freeing it up. I think that ends this episode. I think there were some good tips. I do, too. So please subscribe to us on Stitcher or on iTunes. Tell a friend. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a review. It helps get the word out. You can also check us out on YouTube at Fix It Home Improvement Channel. And we try to add new videos every month. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Deep, 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 deep,